Hello everyone, it's so nice to share with all of you. Um, yeah, the Lord has really been working in my heart during this lockdown period. And um, yeah, I just want to leave this with you guys. Um, when we are born again, we are citizens of heaven. And um, yeah, we are only visitors of this earth. And I had to ask myself during this lockdown, when we have a lot of time, um, what do I spend my time on? What do I allow um, to consume me? Is it things of heaven or things of this earth? And um, I realized that I don't want to miss out on preparing for heaven because I want to get in heaven one day and think, wow, I could have, I could have done more. Um, I don't think we will think that when we are in heaven, but um, yeah, I really want everything that is available for us. And the Lord really gives us everything to have a super prosperous, intimate relationship with Him. And um, in Romans 8 verse 14, um, it says, um, For mature children of God are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And the word impulses just stood out to me because it's like a heartbeat that are in sync, two heartbeats that are in sync. And I really, it just gave me a hunger to get to know the Lord more because I want to, I want my heartbeat to be in sync with the Holy Spirit um, and to move where He goes. And um, sure, uh, our other scripture that also stood out to me is um, Romans 8 also in Romans 8 verse 5. Um, those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. Um, sure, I really want to pursue spiritual realities. And I want to encourage you to start living a life um, like a citizen of, citizen of heaven. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies. Before I start, I just want to say thank you to Nadine for giving us all the opportunity to share an encouragement amongst each other. I think it's very important that we as ladies also share what the Lord has put on our hearts because He uses us as well. Um, so today, I, I would like to share something that's been burning on my heart that He revealed to me. I was reading Mark chapter 4 and in verse 31 it says, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? Jesus is talking. It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots up large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. Over the last few months, the Lord has been taking me through a journey of growth and of pruning. And he, he, yesterday he shared with me about the pruning and how it is never an easy thing. It is something that he does and it's not quick. It takes time before that new shoot comes out and before the fruit of that pruning can actually be seen. And what the Lord was revealing to me was that our faith that we that is as a mustard seed that was sown when we first took the step to follow Christ it is being planted and it is growing into a tree that bears fruit and provides shelter for others but it takes time that growth and that that pruning takes time and he said to me that his word is the light and just as a plant needs the light, the sunlight to photosynthesize and grow, so we in our hearts need the light of the Lord Jesus Christ to shine upon our hearts so that we might grow. And if we are devoid of that light or if we take ourselves away from that light, we will wither and die. And it is the same with that mustard seed. If it never gets the light that it needs, it will never grow. And so, ladies, just an encouragement that no matter what we are facing now, if we endure, we will grow to be a tree that provides much shelter for others. 
and provides fruit that others are able to eat of. And perhaps when your tree has grown, that seed will fall and it will plant in someone else's heart and then produce another tree. So persevere. The Lord has allowed us to persevere because he says that our walk is a walk of endurance. Thank you. Hallo allemaal, um, ek is Lorna, ek is deel van die um, Pretoria Bijbelstudie en vanmiddag wil ek net graag met julle een klein versie deel uit um, Matthäus uh, 19 vers 26, um, hierdie gaan wel Engels wees, <laughs> hier is die King James Version, maar ek sê kerel van sulle raad wees. Um, dit sê, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. En hier is een baie bekende versie, um, en allemaal gebruik dit, maar dit het net vir my so uitgestaan, um, vooral in die tijd, ons sit in die situasie, en niemand weet rarig of hulle kom of gaan nie, en man het toch, soos een van die broers gedeeld het, so paar wat terug, dat as die Heere sal met jou in die situasie is, is daar altyd oorwinning, en ons moet dit nooit vergeet nie, en, en dit is so, soos partij, mense vind hulle self rechtig, en die baie a harde omstandighede op die oomlik, en, en, Net dat, jy moet net vergeer dat die Heere is altyd by jou, want um, dis vir my die laatste ruk ook sikke so, so mooie confirmation geweest dat um, ek sal een gedeelte lees in die Bijbel en dan sal een van die broers deel daar oor of hulle sal iets deel en dan so paar daar later lees ek dit raak en dis net vir my so mooi dat um, jy weet die Heere is hier by my en die Heere is ook daar so waar jy is en, en maak jy so ook wat er situasie jy jouself invind nie, of waar jy jouself bevind nie, um, ek is gelukkig genoeg om, saam my gesin te quarantine, so is altyd iemand, um, maar as jy alleen is, en um, nie weet rechtig, wat gebeur, of wat om te doen nie, dat jy nie die Heere moet gaan soek, hy is in sy woord, en hy is altyd by jou, en, so ja, ek hoop, ek hoop dit, um, ja, <laughs> um, ek hoop jy dat een lekker quarantine verder baie staakte en ek verlang vreselik baie en ek kan nie wacht om allemaal te sien nie. So ja, staakte, bye bye. Hello everybody, I can't get used to lockdown and especially the masks everyone is wearing because I cannot see people's beautiful faces. Karen says I must look at their eyes to see their smiles. During this time, we've been doing a lot of reminiscing and I've sorted through photographs and discs and memory sticks of photographs. Thinking about happy times makes difficult times more bearable and it reassures me that God was in the past and he will be in the future. He has kept me before and he will not fail me now. I was reminded of an old and sad verse in Psalm 137 that says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. The Hebrew people were in captivity, and when they remembered their homeland, they wept. They felt they could not sing the Lord's song in a strange land. They hung up their harps in the willow trees. Sometimes I'm sad, anxious, panicky, and worried about how everything that is familiar has changed. Our hearts long for people we love, and our plans for 2020 have been adjusted. And when Ezra led the people out of captivity in Ezra 8 verse 21, he proclaimed a time of prayer at the river Ahava. That means longing or affection for one another. The prayer was to seek a right way for us, our little ones and all our substance. And the hand of the Lord was upon them and he delivered them. I miss you all and may our eternal God Help us to seek the right way of deliverance. Hello, dames. I will eat some meat with you today. So I'm going to eat a little bit of this and then I'm going to eat something and then I'm going to eat bread. What I'm going to eat is the following. Die Heere het jou lief, vertrouw op die Heere, die Heere gee kracht, gee jou hart vir Jesus, vergewe so dat jy vergewe kan word, wees lief vir jou naastes, en nie op, hou bid nie, glo net, God is met jou, God draai jou as jy moeg is, 
Luister as God met jou praat, wie in God sal gloe, sal lewe. Wonderwerke gebeur met God. Moe nie bang wees nie, God is met jou. Wees die mense maar mee as jou met by God, doe wat ewige lewe. Wees een licht in die duisternis, die Heere geseen die wat syk is. Hou op, hou aan bid, moet nie ophou nie. God hoor jou, God is die licht in die wereld, die Heere sorg vir die opracht is. Jesus het gesterf vir jou. Die Heere is my herder. Heere, wees my die pad wat ek moet loop. Laat ons, laat jou leven aan die Heere oor. Heere, red my asjeblief. Die Heere klop, gaan jy oopmaak. Ek na hierdie gelees en toe dink ek vir myself hoe ek die afgelopen paar dag hier op die lockdown gevoel het. Ek het gevoel Ek is onzeker en ek nie geweef wat toe toe die nie, maar daar is dat hoofgekom vir my, en ek het besef, ek moet elke dag gaan aanpak, soos ek het normaal mag sal aanpak, en ek sal, ek moet dinge doen, soos ek normaal mag sal doen, daar is een siekte in die wereld, maar ons moet elke dag bid, en ons moet elke dag aan vast wat het is. Maar ons moet ook weet, die Heere is met ons, en ons moet weet, alles sal ten goede gaan. Dankie. Liewe Heer, baie dankie vir alles wat u ons gee. Ga met die mense wat syk is, liewe Heer. Dankie, dat ons weet, ons is kinders van u. Dankie vir mense wat vir ander mense sorg, liewe Heer, en dat Ons weet, daar gaan een dag een uitkomst wees, as u weef ons kom al. Amen. Hey everyone, I'm so privileged to be able to share a bit of what God has revealed to me in these past couple of weeks. So I just want to read from John 1 verse 12 and 13. And it says here that, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Um, and this just shows that God really wants us to be his children. And we are all a child of someone because we went through the process of birth um, from, from our mothers. And um, God really wants us to accept Jesus and believe in Jesus and then be born through him um, to become his children and in the new living translation it says it so beautifully that it's not a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan but a birth that comes from god and that's just so beautiful to me um that everything is just in place for us all to become children of god and god really wants us to accept him as our father because there's just so much grace and mercy and peace and love um, to just live with him and in him um, and I just want to encourage us to all um, every day just um, accept that we are his children and he will always take care of us um, especially in these times um, that we really don't need to be afraid of anything and um, yeah he, he has our backs and he will always provide um, so yeah uh, thank you for listening, and I hope this brings some encouragement to some people. Hi everyone, uh, it's Sian from Krugsdorp. I miss you all so much. Um, I cannot wait to see everyone again, especially our bunch on a Wednesday night. Um, I'm going to try to keep this short. So I was just reminded this morning, I read 2 Chronicles verse 1 to 30, and it's one of my favorite stories in the Bible of Jehoshaphat who um, won this war without fighting, no bloodshed. Uh, they came in singing and the enemy killed each other before there was even an, a need for Jehoshaphat's um, army to attack at all. 
and he did that because he knew that he any decision he made without prayer wasn't even worthwhile. And the first thing he did when he got news that um, it was the Ammonites and the Aramites uh, were about to attack was he called a national prayer meeting. He knew that prayer was so absolutely important. It was so imperative for him to do that and to equip his men first with um, faith and that they all prayed together and that's how they won. And I think in this time of great uncertainty and anxiety, that that's all, all that we can do because this battle and this virus and the world and everything that's going on out there is out of our, out of our hands. So it should be out of our minds. And um, the Lord does that for us. Um, and I just want to remind everyone that it's not our salaries and it's not our jobs and it's not our titles and it's not our businesses that will sustain us from here. Um, everything that we get is from the Lord's hand. And the only way that we can get that is by praying for it. So I'm praying for all of you and your families and your businesses that everything just works out exactly to God's will, because that's the only way any of this can work out. Um, and we know that God's will is good and it's perfect. And he knows what we want even before we ask for it. So I love you guys. Take care. Bye. Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Um, so during this lockdown, I've been spending a lot of time in the Psalms and Psalm 16, one verse has really caught my eye and I've been meditating on, on it for a long time. It's Psalm 16 and it says, Psalm 16 verse 8, it says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. And I think I just realized the importance of keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus because I'm very guilty of analyzing myself a lot and analyzing my walk with the Lord so I'm like am I close enough to the Lord am I doing the right thing is my emotional state okay am I doing this right and again to a little bubble of looking at myself that my attention is no longer on Jesus I'm stressing about my relationship with Jesus but I'm not looking to Jesus and I just think that's so dangerous because often we look to Jesus to make us feel something. We think that he's there for us, that he's there to, you know, stroke our ego and say, you're such a good little child. You know, you like, you absolutely amazing. He does do that, but that's not what he's there for. We're made to look at him with glory and awe and wonder. He was not, we were made for him. He wasn't made for us. And I just often think of the metaphor of a sunflower, how a sunflower has to look at the sun to survive that's the only way if it doesn't look at the sun then it shrivels up and it dies as soon as it looks down at the floor or at itself it starts dying and i think we're very similar we have to keep our eyes on the sun who is jesus christ because that's what we're made to do we were made to look at him with awe and wonder and say lord you are amazing like we were made to feel small <laughs> in his presence and be like lord you're because he was not made for us he was not made to make us feel good you know we were made for him and to glorify him and magnify him so yeah i think that's just really stuck out for me and once again the story of peter walking on the water towards jesus as soon as he took his eyes off jesus he fell apart and i think that's so relevant for us as well as soon as we focus on ourselves we start falling apart so um yeah that's really what jesus has been really speaking to me hello everyone and um, today i just want to share with you what the lord's really been speaking to me about um, it's been on my heart since the beginning of the year, but the Lord's really been speaking to me a lot about it in the last few days. Um, he's been ministering to me about um, just how the only constant in our lives is Christ. And the only one we can really trust is the Lord. Um, especially now that the lockdown's been extended and everything just keeps on changing. Um, the Lord's really spoken a lot to me about only trusting in him and making sure that um, my faith is in the Lord and that I'm not trusting the comforts of my life. Um, especially there in Pretoria when varsity is busy and everything's happening and there's a lot of um, fellowship and accountability and now that it's holiday it's a little bit different. Um, so the Lord has really been speaking to me about that and then he put this verse in Matthew 16 verse 13 to 18 on my heart. Um, it's where Jesus asks his disciples, who do the people say that I am? And um, then the disciples tell him, some people say you're Elijah, some people say you're a prophet. Um, and then he asks them, who do you say I am? Um, and this verse has really been on my heart for a while. Um, and then Simon P Peter answers him, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus responded to him and he said, 
Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. Um, and this was so real to my heart to make sure that I know who I say the Son of Man is. Um, and in this last few days, the Lord's really been ministering to me about that, asking me, who do you say I am? Um, and it's so beautiful to me when Jesus answers him, he says, um, blessed are you, Simon Peter, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. Um, and it was just so real to me that each of us have to reach that point where we ask ourselves, who do I say the Son of Man is? Um, and Jesus needs to reveal it to us. Flesh and blood can't reveal it to us, but Jesus needs to reveal to us who he is. And this is such a beautiful time in lockdown to really spend time with the Lord and make sure that we know who the Son of Man is and that who we base our understanding of Jesus on is from the Holy Spirit and it's based on what the Bible says, that we know the Jesus from the Bible and not some other version that we've seen through other people's perspective or maybe we've gotten to know Jesus through um, what a friend says about him or what our parents say about the Lord, but not from actual revelation from Jesus, who he says he is. Um, and it was just so real to my heart that we have this opportunity now to make sure that who we say Jesus is, is who he actually is. Um, it's who the Bible says he is. And um, that just gives me such a, um excitement in my heart, especially now when we don't know what the future is going to hold and everything keeps on changing. But if we know who Jesus is, we know he's going to be there. He's going to be there for all of our tomorrows. And if we have such a faith and understanding of who he is, it won't scare us that we don't know what's happening and what tomorrow brings. Because if he's there, then it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a blessing to be wherever the Lord is. Um, yeah, so it's just been such an encouragement to me to search my heart and to make sure that I know who I say the Son of Man is. Um, so yeah, I just want to encourage you with that. There's um, a few days now extra for lockdown and to really use this to make sure that we have the right understanding of Christ and an understanding based on what the Holy Spirit has revealed to us out of the Bible. Um, yeah, so I just want to encourage you to get to know the Son of Man um, because the rewards are more than we can ever understand. Hi everyone, I hope that you're all doing well and keeping safe. I'm definitely um, missing everyone and having cups of coffee and giggles with everyone. Um, but I just wanted to share something with you um, which the Lord placed in my heart. Um, so I was listening to a song earlier today, um, Sound of the Saints, if um, any of you have listened to it. And it's talking about how um, God's beauty and power is revealed through creation but um the sound of the saints is just so much beautiful so much more beautiful compared to that um and i was just also um just reading through ephesians 1 and it was saying therefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and your love for all the saints do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers and I was just so encouraged because during the lockdown when we can't see each other and um, when we can't be there for one another it's so awesome because we can still pray for each other and we can still um, be with each other um, and united with each other in God and um, yeah that was just really placed upon my heart. Hello, every hello, my precious family. I hope you are all well and that you guys are all surviving lockdown. Um, so, Kez had asked us that Aunt Nadine was asking for all of us to um, maybe share something if there's been something placed on our hearts. And for the past few days, um, I've really been enjoying reading out of 1 Samuel. And I was reading out of 1 Samuel 1, and it talks about Hannah and how she. Um, was not able to bear a child and how she went to the Lord and she just wept before the Lord and There's a certain scripture that stood out for me when she was talking to the priest who had thought that she was under the influence of alcohol And she had said to him. I was pouring my soul out to the Lord and For me that was such a beautiful scripture um, And if I can also just add another scripture to it I was also reading out of Genesis 39 and it's about Joseph's story when he was in Egypt. And throughout the scriptures, it talks about how God was seen in Joseph's life by everyone who had worked with him and had seen him. And if I can just add these two scriptures together and just be able to say to you guys, 
Um, yeah, it's really been burning my heart that we'll really just pour our souls out to the Lord and that um, we'll really just place everything that we do and everything that is done in our lives before the Lord and that, yeah, that throughout our lives the Lord will really just um, shine through us and that others will just have that seed planted in their hearts to know more about the Lord and, and that others will just have that seed planted in their hearts to know more about the Lord and yeah so for me that's really just been burning on my heart and yeah so just to have that to pour your soul out to the Lord um, and just be able to lay everything down at his feet thank you so much love you lots bye in Thessalonians 5 say, Wees altyd vol blijdschap. Moe nie ophou bid nie en wees in alle omstandighede dankbaar, want dit is wat God van jullie verwacht, omdat jullie met Jesus Christus verenig is. Um, ek wil so my net sê dat, jylle veroogend vir my gesê dat, ons in alle omstandighede moet dankbaar wees, want dit is wat hy van ons verwacht. En ek het vandag so maar so geloop en gedink, hoeveel het ek om voor dankbaar te wees. Um, met, my hele, met my hele hart is ek dankbaar vir die fondatie van Jesus Christus wat in my hart kon le is oor die jare. En ek is so dankbaar, ek het tyd gehad in die lockdown om een skilderij te maak oor die fondaties van Jesus Christus in ons leven en die fondaties waar ek ons bou. En ek wil ons sommer net bemoedig dier te sê, as ons fondaties vaststaan, sal Jesus Christus ons dier hierdie moeilike tye leid. Um, en ek is dankbaar vir elke fondatie wat in my leven vast is. En ek wil um, allemaal so my uitdagen en net sê, gaan kyk na julle fondaties. En kyk of julle hoekstene en julle bouwstene vast le. Want God wil he, hy, hy het ons in sy woord gegee om ons te help. Dis ons hulpmiddel wat ons het om dier hierdie moeilike tyde te gaan. Um, so, mag die heren met julle elkeen wees en mag die vrede van Jesus Christus oor elke en sy gedagtes en sy hart waghou. Mag ons ons harte ondersoek en mag ons um, nooit, nooit dink ons is te goed om te verander nie. Mag ons altyd en elke dag ons harte ondersoek en seker maak en besef hoe nodig ons Jesus Christus het. So my liewe boetjes en sissies, mag die vrede van Jesus Christus jylle gedagtes oorheers en mag hy jylle nummer 1 elke dag wees. Hello everybody, um, the Lord has started talking to me a long time ago about, about being grateful and as the Holy Spirit sometimes work, especially when I'm busy working and doing jobs that I'd rather be doing something else or I'm, I, if somebody else suggested something that I don't like. The Holy Spirit started rebuking me and and he started to teach me about how to be grateful in all circumstances. Because one day especially I can remember I was busy washing dishes. Now this is not always the most productive activity I can do. I don't know how you feel, but sometimes I'd rather be doing something else. And the Lord just, the Holy Spirit just pulled me up short and said, rather be, give, use your breath to give thanks to God for the fruit you just had on this place. And since then, I've started to ask the Holy Spirit to show me what to be grateful for in this specific circumstance. For instance, when I'm hanging up washing, instead of, also I can do something else, and why do I have to do it all the time? I start, I'm starting to thank the Lord that I've got clothes to wear. That I am able to, um, hang it up by myself, that I'm not dependent on somebody else, that my body works perfectly. And instead, the Holy Spirit is teaching me to pray for people that don't have food, or don't have a house to clean, or don't have clothes to wear, or not able to do the jobs that I'm doing. And 
it really pulls me up short when I realize how ungrateful we as human beings can be. And it started to change my attitude totally. As that verse is, be grateful to the Lord in all things, for all things. And there's something in your situation that you can ask the Holy Spirit, if you can't see it, please show me. What can I be grateful for? Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, I've been reading from John chapter 15 where Jesus tells us that he is the vine and we are the branches. And in verse 2, it says that every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. And I went to um, read what the meaning of the word purge is and it says that it is to rid someone or something of an unwanted quality, condition, or feeling. And um, when I read what this word means, it became clear to me what the Lord wants to do in our lives. Because He wants to come into our um, He wants to come into our hearts and He wants to clean or rid our minds and hearts of the sin that's there and the ugliness and he wants to purify purify us and when i read the word purge i found it to be quite maybe a bit of a harsh word and i was just thinking that sometimes um when the lord wants to come into our lives and cut away the things that shouldn't be there it can be a bit uncomfortable and maybe even he wants to take away things that we kind of like having in our hearts um, but i've just realized that the lord has such good intentions for us and he knows that if he um, cuts those things away and takes those things out of our lives, we can really flourish for him. And if you read in verse 4, it says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. And when I read that verse, I was just so challenged and encouraged to abide in the Lord Jesus so that we can bring forth fruit for his kingdom. And there's a beautiful song I love listening to. Um, and the words are so special to me. And it says, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. And these words have become the prayer on my heart, and I hope they can become the prayer on your heart too. Hi all, let's praise God. Let's worship His holy name. I get the first, I've got a verse for you guys. Um, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land and that is um, baie keer ons, ons harte is nie recht met die Heere nie en as ons net vir die Heere vraag, want ons bid en ons bid en ons bid en ons gebede word nie geantwoord nie, hoekom nie Heere, hoekom nie dan moet jy net gaan sit en denk, weet jy wat, hoe weak het is ons, hoe weak het is ons harte, want die Heere sê, turn away nie so sê hy I will forgive you for your sins if you will turn away um, from your from your from your wickedness. I will I will heal your land. Axel, your eyes heal. I will be in your house. Axel, daar wees vir julle. So, die gebed wat ek vandag het vir ons, is dat ons Psalm 51 vers 10, rarig op ons harte moet le, is, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. En dit is in Psalm 51 vers 10. En hierdie wat ek nou gelees het, um, is in 2 Chronicles 7 vers 14. Is, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Jylle, laat ons ons self humble voor God. Want, die ding is net, ons is nie humble genoeg nie. We must humble ourselves. Ons moet vir ons mans bid. Ons is prayer warriors. Come on girls. We pray warriors. Dat is, ek dink is die beste ding wat daar is. Mag die Heere jylle bless. En mag jylle amazing dag heen, Jesus. Dankie, sister. Love you all. Bye.
So waiting upon the Lord just for a word for this video. I really felt it very heavily pressed on my heart today really just to pray and to pray for each one of you uh, that has just watched this video of all the girls giving their testimonies. So let's uh, just close our eyes and pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for these incredible testimonies, Lord. And Lord Jesus, I just want to commit each and every single person uh, that has watched this video. Lord Jesus, I really just want to commit them to you, Father God. And Father, I want to thank you for this time where you have just called us to be still and to listen to your voice, Father God. And Lord, so many of us are so busy in our lives, Lord Jesus, that we forget that we can just... Um, Come into a quiet place with you, Lord. And Father God, I just want to thank you um, that you are working in each and every single one of our lives, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I just really, um, it's been something that you've pressed so hard on my heart is Romans 5, um, verse 3 to 5, Lord Jesus. And just where you talk about that we can have glory in our tribulations, Lord Jesus, because um, trials produces uh, perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope and uh, I just want to thank you for that and Father God I want to thank you that we have hope in the Lord Jesus and Father God just um, after this Easter weekend I just want to thank you so much once again for sending your son to die on that cross for us and so Father God I really just pray and commit each of us that have just watched this video to you Lord Jesus and I really just pray Lord for soft hearts for each and every single one of us Father God and Father I pray that the seeds that have been planted by the testimonies today Lord I really just pray that they will have such an impact Lord Jesus and I love the saying of um, one plants a seed and other waters but only you bring the increase Father God and so Father I pray that you'll be with each and every single one of us Father God and Father, I also just want to pray um, that if anyone is gripped by fear, Lord Jesus, that they will really just rest in the fact that you are in control, Lord Jesus. And your Lord, I just um, thank you for this constant reminder, Lord, that you have got us no matter what. And so, Father God, I want to just once again thank you for this incredible opportunity for all of us really just to share, Lord. And uh, Father God, I really just um, pray that you will continue to use each of us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you will continue to prick our hearts and to do just such a great work. And so, Father God, I just want to commit each of us to you, Lord Jesus, and just pray that you will be glorified in everything we do. Amen. So that's, that's it for all the ladies. Um, it's been an absolute blessing and I'm very grateful to each and every one of you for sending your portion and we're all feeling encouraged and this is what we're going to need during this time i don't think we're going to get out of our home soon so this is the way that we're going to serve the lord and you know the bible speaks about the lord building his church and we know that that is true and he will keep us during this time so till the next time be blessed everyone